The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. my husband kept saying, what am I preaching about? What am I preaching about? I said, you preach about the goodness of God. <laughs> and he's a good, good father. No, I just really felt like it was um, a season of testimony um, to bring hope and hope to others through the faithfulness of the Lord. And we definitely had um, a test in that this week, but we kind of want to share a little bit about um, the journey that we've been on this far in our very short four years of marriage. Um, we have definitely been through a lot, and the faithfulness of the Lord has never ceased to amaze us. Um, just to uh, let you know about our week so that the little things I have to share make sense. Um, we had a miscarriage last weekend and it really hit us hard in every way. Um, it was very difficult physically, emotionally, and mentally. Um, but through it, covering my notes, it's not your turn yet. I thought they were lyrics. <laughs> um, the Lord really spoke to me through our children. And um, right away, they both, the little ones both knew what had happened and were overly affectionate, overly loving, overly doting, um, just lay on your chest, very uncommon, unlike either of them, to be still. Um, but Haven, I mean, Haven doesn't stop talking ever, but something that she doesn't say normally is, I love you. It's not a normal, I mean, we say it to her all the time, but, but, um, it was a week full of caressing my face and holding me, and Mama, I love you so much. I love you so much, Mama. And of course, it would make me cry, and finally, I just was like, oh, why does it have to hurt so much? And I heard the Lord say, do you hear my heart? Are you hearing me? These are my words. I love you. Um, there's... I had Haven and Landon's name picked out for 14 years, um, and Landon's name came from a movie, um, Love Comes Softly, a series by Michael Landon Jr. And in the story, the main character's name was Clark, and I remember sitting with my mom 14 years ago, and she turned to me while we were watching the movie, and she said, your husband is going to come like this. And I was like, okay, okay, so that's a promise. So I wanted something to take from the movie to remember that my husband was gonna come. My husband was gonna come, whatever that looked like. Um, and I had picked the name Landon. The, the Lord reminded me this week of the movie, the, one of my favorite passages in the movie was the main character turned to the guy and was like, how could you believe in and how could you trust in a God that would let your wife get sick and die? How can you ask me to trust and believe in a God that would let my husband have an accident and be killed? And he looked over at his daughter and he said, you see, Chrissy, I'm her father, and I can be walking with her and holding her hand, and she can still fall down and get hurt. It doesn't mean I let it happen, but it means that I'm there, 
to pick her up and carry her when she needs to be carried. And he spoke to me that I am someone who is typically strong. I'm a strong person in almost every way. And for me to lay on my father's chest and let him say how much he loved me and to say, okay, I'll let you carry me while you heal my heart through this time was hard because I just want to get back up. Physically, I wasn't able to for many days. Um, but I, the, what I want to say in everything that this ministry has taught me and has the areas that I've been healed, I believe I'm as good as I am today because of how healed up I already was and that this didn't break me. It doesn't mean it doesn't hurt and it's okay to mourn for a season, but I have children in heaven that I will spend eternity with. And I think that that's a whole lot to be thankful for because that is a really long time. Um, so he is faithful, he is good. He, he will speak to you, he will be there for you if you let him. He's there. He will. He won't leave you. Um, but you, you have to make sure you don't have the walls up. You have to make sure that you're in a position to hear him. And I'm thankful that I was. I'm truly thankful, you know, that the children were sensitive to the spirit and were able to minister to me in the time of need. But um, it's okay for him to carry you. And, yeah, what else did you want me to say? <laughs> that's, that's plenty. What, what we think is, what I think is incredible is the fact that, <clears throat> that we can go through these things as his children and that he is always faithful. He is a father to the fatherless. Um, I think that, <laughs> sorry, it's not that I'm, I'm sad because of the situation. That, that situation hurts, but I'm not, I'm not unhappy because I know that, that, that the child's in heaven. Um, he doesn't have to go through all this stuff here on the earth that we had to go through and whatever worse. Um, but... Um, the thing is, is through, this, through the ministry and through the, the ability to, to deal effectively with the, the negative emotions and, and things that you can have, we don't even think about, we don't, we, we, it's not even in our concept between her and I. Listen to her, she's like, I want to just curl up on, on my daddy's lap and, and have him speak to me, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's not even in our DNA anymore that, that we would blame God for such a thing, you know? And that's, that is part of how this ministry works. Most people shut down or put up a wall. They shut down, put up a wall, blame. You know, it was myself, blame myself, blame somebody oh, else, blame me, God. Believe me, those thoughts came. Those thoughts came. But we can deal with them immediately. So <laughs> I wasn't sure if I got too close that she would start crying. So I was kind of off to the side, but, but yeah, it's, it's an amazing thing. And when we look at, I was going to get into this a little bit later because today is Father's Day. And the fact that we look at the Lord and the way that he deals with things in our lives and allows, we, we say that he allows this to happen or we let, he allows this to happen, but he, he is with us regardless of what is happening, is, should be how we say it. Regardless of what is happening in this world, he is with us period, right? Fear not, I am with you. Fear not, I am with you. How many times does he say that? I am with you. It is something that we have to realize that he is with us and he's in us. And, and if we allow, we, we yield to him and allow him to, to work through us, you know, we create heaven on earth ourselves. But um, I'm, I guess I can, I can start. Thank you, honey. 
I love that 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 first song because it's like it reminded us it's it's called reckless love and i didn't i didn't you know love it at first when i first heard it and i felt it was like really radio ish but when you when you look at how before even just just like right in the beginning it says before I, before i spoke a word you were singing over me before I, it's like before i took a breath you breathed your life into me but Bef- we were predestinated predestinated, is that a word, to, to be sons. And it's like, that was before we ever were, were, were formed. That's before he, it was, it was not, uh, we were not even around. And he had already predestined us to be a son and a daughter. And when we're, we're born again, it's like we're, we become children, we're the children of the Lord, right? But in order to become to the next step, it's like we, we are then called sons, and we work towards that goal. And, and that goal is to be more like Jesus and allowing him to work through us in our life. It, it seems like a, it's a difficult concept, but it's really not. When we, look at the, when we look at the scriptures and we look at how God treated Jesus, I mean, God the Father was the ultimate Father that we should be able to, you know, now as a father myself, it's like we, we need to be able to look and see what, as an example, was given in the scriptures and how to raise our, our, our children. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard, <laughs> I, I have to admit. But I thought it was really interesting is this, this whole week was, um, leading up to this was, was really interesting in the, in the um, back in the 80s when Ronald Reagan was president. He had a couple things going on that, that were pretty interesting as far as the, the Berlin Wall. It was the great tear down this wall speech that was back in 1987, right? And it was like during this week. I think it was 14th or 15th of June. And, and the thing was, it's like that's what really the Lord is speaking to us now. And we're, we're actually, our endeavor in the small groups, in reality, we are going, we're going deep with our, with our groups. So if you don't, want to, you don't want to challenge and you don't want to mature, you're probably not going to be very comfortable. I'm sorry. Um, there's, a, there's been a lot going on, so this is going to be kind of like um, vegetable soup, so to speak. We, had, we, started, we started with something that was a little, a little rough, I understand. But um, in, in reality, there's so many good things that God's doing throughout the, the past few weeks to almost balance everything out. Um, the school is, is, we're up to 600, what are we up to, 16, 1,624 students on the online school signed up. Now there's, yes, yeah, seven or eight of those are pastors. But the, yeah, 1,600 and some people on the online school. So I'm, I'm pretty busy most days uh, answering emails and, and taking notes of people's comments and different things. and. Um, we, we started a, uh, we have a little um, community now that we could actually talk to each other called, uh, it's on um, a format called Slack and you could download the app, Slack app and, and, and join the Team Embassy um, online school um, discussion groups. And so we have about 40 or so people that signed up for that so far, which is pretty cool because all around the world they haven't had a chance to be able to see that they're online together or that they're studying anything together. We have people from like 53 different countries, 53 different countries that, that can now communicate with each other um, and bounce things off of each other and stuff, which is really awesome. Um, how many are you familiar with the, the online school at all? I haven't checked it out. Um, I know Sharon has, she's, she's a star pupil. Um, but uh, there, the, um, the ability to, to get uh, the message and, and what we preach out, the team online school is the training part of the ministries. And it goes all over the place. I mean, anywhere that you can have internet. Um, we don't have a lot of, we don't have anything really available in, in different languages. So it's mostly, uh, you know, English speaking or secondary language of, of English countries. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a bunch. 
So it's super exciting, and, and I get to pray with people from all over the world, um, everywhere, Netherlands, Norway, um, South Africa, tons of people from South Africa, Sweden, Switzerland, Germany. Um, so that's exciting. And if you wanted to be able to check it out, you can. As part of our congregation, you're, you're more than welcome to join as far as um, seeing what people are actually commenting and stuff. Because what we wanted to do was just like what we're doing with the, with the, the donuts and coffee in the mornings, we're trying to get a, a little bit more of a sense of a family orientation in our congregation and, and also with the small groups as well. We're trying to get those walls down. You know, Mr. Gorbachev, you know, tear down that wall, open that gate is what he said. But it's the same, and, and, and the thing was, um, we're trying to do that as, as well as this on the online school. So if you're not real familiar with it, um, check it out. It's, um, you can go on teamembassy.com and click on online school. It'll take you right to it. You can check out some of the stuff that's on there. There's some free stuff and whatnot. If you haven't already um, looked this up on YouTube, we have hundreds of, of free videos on YouTube that you can check out. Some people, um, actually this week, somebody, somebody told me that they followed Den Dennis and Jennifer on YouTube and, and myself on some of the different messages that um, we have out there and for years, like for the past like two or three years, and that they've already been changed and transformed. They have our church DNA where they live. And it's like, you know, in Sweden, and it, it, it's so incredible that we can re have that, you know, utilize media in, in, that, in that way that doesn't cost us, a, you know, to, to get that out there, but it costs us, you know, in a lot of different areas that we have to pay for other things too. But, but being able to get that to somebody across, across the other side of the world is just phenomenal. And, and seeing changed lives that aren't even, you, you can't even understand them you know, sometimes when they're talking, <laughs> but to see that their lives are completely changed, coming out of, of, of um, satanic type things or, you know, um, Santeria and different things and, and having their lives turned around completely is just awesome. It's just, it's, un it's unbelievable. So I did want to encourage you with, with some of that. And I, I'd like to read a couple comments that we've gotten over the last few days and, and months. But um, just, just for, a lot of the people that we, we do on the online, that, that do take the online school courses, many of them choose the 60 day challenge to do online, um, which is um, one of my favorite courses that are on there. Um, let's, let's, I'll just give you an example of some of the comments that I get almost daily. From Philip, I would like to thank God, our Father, for blessing me through your ministry. It's been very refreshing. I've been listening to Pastor Dennis every opportunity I drive, which is about three hours a day. Um, Wendy says, praise God for your ministry, Dr. Dennis and Dr. Jen. I've received total breakthrough from God reading your books. I've, I've read Practicing His Presence 24-7, Flowing in the River of God's Will, Live, Live Free, and Self-Deliverance. I'm also doing the 60-day challenge, and, I've, uh, and I'm taking your online school 60-day challenge, even though I've already purchased everything <laughs> about it and that's in it um, but God has a sense of humor I guess I knew beforehand that I was supposed to take the course to God be the glory and I am free and bless you Dr. Dennis and Jennifer um, Michael says I'm now on day six of the 60 day emotional healing challenge and I continue to see great progress towards being able to feel peace and experience a supernatural exchange that forgiveness is more consistently your reply helped me in that affected my, encouraged my heart. And now I already on, I'm on day six and I'm experiencing a definite consistency in my ability to drop down and feel my feelings and yield to Christ within and experience him, take them away and replace them with his peace. And with each succeeding day, I feel definite increase in my ability to feel my feelings, feel the peace of God within and feel the forgiveness exchange taking place whenever I do it. Thanks again for the encouragement. Now that person had a difficult time with emotions and feelings. He never had a feeling in his life type of type of person, right? Except for except, for, except for when he when he would he would he would get into his prayer prayer closet and he would he would drop down and all he would feel was hungry. 
a lot of people that are that that have nothing but head knowledge and they're completely cranial, um, cerebral. They're cerebral in their cranium. Um, have a, hard, a difficult time processing emotions. They think they feel. They think they remember what they feel like. They, you know, it's all thinking. It's not feeling. But anyway, um, those are just a few. We, there's, there's, there's several I get every day, which is, is just amazing, I think. So if you do get a chance, go, go ahead and check out the online school. Um, what I was talking about earlier is um, back in June 12th of 1987, I wanted to read a little quote from uh, President Ronald Reagan at the time. He said, as I looked out a moment ago from Reichstag, the embodiment of German unity, I noticed the words crudely spray painted upon the wall, perhaps by a young Berliner. This wall will fall. Beliefs become reality. And yes, across Europe, this wall will fall, for it cannot withstand faith, it cannot withstand truth, and the wall cannot withstand freedom. And I, and I just, through the past weeks while we were trying to develop a system as far as like the small groups and and just the, the coffee and donuts out the front and trying to get people to, to actually relate with each other. I'm, I'm not saying that you don't already, but there isn't time after church. It's like there, there's a difficult time trying to get a hold of us. We're breaking down stuff. We're packing stuff up. We're getting out of here as quick as possible. And it's just there's no time to share with each other. Like what happened during the week? What's your name? You know, where are you from? Um, so we did. So we're doing that at 9:30 in the morning. Please come, just just to get to know each other. It'll be good. Donuts will be great. I don't think I'll have any, but the donuts will be great. Coffee on the other hand. Uh, because it's it's Father's Day, I wanted to really just. Um, I just wanted to honor my father first of all for 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 everything that he's done for me personally, let alone the ministry. And what they've what they've done together as a as a couple for people all over the world, um, it doesn't seem like, you know, if you look around and we we have a relatively smaller church, it's not like a mega millions church, um, but we reach we reach thousands and thousands of people outside of this church, you know, and and it's and it's just incredible what God can do when you're obedient, right? It's an, it's incredible what God's done here. So I, I thank I, I thank the Lord for the, for that, and um, I wanted to read something that President Reagan said a year prior to the, the, the tear down this this wall speech. I thought it was just amazing because it's it is not just Father's Day, but it was Flag Day at the time, um, in the same weekend. It happened June fourteenth, on nineteen eighty six. If we ask ourselves what has held our nation together, what was what has given it strength to endure and the spirit to achieve, we find the answer in our families, in those basic family values of work, hope, charity, faith, and love. So it's appropriate that this year, Father's Day, falls in the same week weekend as Flag Day. For in commem <coughs> commemorating fatherhood, we're also expressing a basic truth about America. What does fatherhood mean in America today? I guess it means the same as it always has. Fatherhood can sometimes be walking the floor at midnight with a baby that, you, that can't sleep. But more likely, fatherhood's repairing a, a bicycle wheel for the upteenth time, knowing that it won't last the afternoon. Fatherhood is guiding a youth through what seems to be a wilderness of adolescence towards adulthood. Fatherhood is holding tight when all else seems falling apart, and it's letting go when it's time to part. Fatherhood is long hours at the blast furnace or in the fields, behind the wheel or in front of a computer screen. Working a 12-hour shift or doing a six-month tour of duty, it's, it's giving one's all. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> From the break of the day until its end, on the job, in the house, but most of all, in the heart. I just thought that was so profound. that we would have, first of all, that we had that president, that he would actually think that way. My wife cut my hair, 
and she took a little bit too much off the back. And she's like, you want to maybe cover that up a little bit? And I said, oh, no, it makes me more, it looks, makes me more, look more fatherly. And, and as I put these, these glasses on, uh, I wrote my notes very small. But it makes me look a little bit fatherly, right? A little bit more. As he said, he went on and said, "Now, if you're thinking, who, who's, <clears throat> look who's talking. He's a father himself. Well, that's right. But on today, I think we could all remember that this weekend, at least, that every father is also a son. So on that day, for fathers, <laughs> we too say thanks to the American dads." for their labor and their legacy of their families and our freedoms. I thought that was just an incredible speech. Sorry, I'm a weeper. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna really apologize for that too much. But I mean, if I watch a, a sad Kleenex commercial, I, I kind of get choked up. <laughs> but this, has an, this had an impact on me, as you can see. Um, I wanted to, to you know, just because it is, it is Father's Day, and I wanted to really be able to get to, part of one of the, the, uh, the first things that we do in Module 1 is that we go through mommy and daddy issues, and we pray them through. And I think that, you know, there's, there's, there's cruel parents and so, that, that some have experienced, cruel parents, there been, there, there's different um, aspects of things that we've, really needed from our parents that weren't given to us. That's all of us. We're, none of us are, are, you know, no parent is perfect, right? And, and, none, and none of us are perfect as children either. And so um, if you wanted to, if, I mean, if you wanted to do it in your heart, I would say take a, take a few minutes, drop down into your spirit, and just release forgiveness to the mother or father that wasn't quite the best in your mind. Release forgiveness from Christ in you. Receive forgiveness for any unreal expectations or unmet, unmet needs. You can receive unmet needs from Jesus. He can fill that for you. Now, if you've processed that, which means it turned to peace, when you can think about that, when you can think about your father in that situation, if you have peace, that means that a real transaction, a spiritual transaction has happened. I tell you what, when the first, at first when I was growing up and I was a teenager, in my early teens, I, I, I really, I, I honestly hated my father. Um, I, I, everything in me, I mean, I don't know if he ever knew that, but I mean, my friend Luke and I would plan, plot ways of killing him off, making it look like an accident. Now, the thing is, is after so many years went by and I realized that I, I you know, it would go back and forth. Teenage, teenage years, I was, I was in like la-la land. I think that most teenagers are aliens. <laughs> I was. But w later, in, later in life, there were situations that had come up, and I really held it against my dad. And we, we had pulled apart, like, years. I didn't talk to you for years. The one of the, the most major things that ever turned my life around was the ability to, f to f find out that I can release forgiveness from Christ in me to them, regardless of their actions, regardless of how hurt I was, regardless of they were right or wrong. It changed my life. 
And I don't want anybody to be in this congregation that can't do the same thing because they can, you can. We all have the same, we're built the same way, we have the same tools, we have the ability to receive everything that we didn't get from our earthly parents. Everything that we thought we should have had and get that filled. There was, there's not a, a greater thing that had happened in my life than the res restoration between my relationship with my father and myself. Yeah. Besides my children being born, that would have never happened. I don't want anybody to miss that because the, the, the forgiveness helps you. It helps you move on. It helps you mature. It helps you to grow without forgiveness and done properly. It's, it will stunt you. And it's not just, it's not just, you know, stunt you mentally or whatever like that. It's stunt you in your, in your walk with the Lord. You won't understand anything. You'll be like a little, the only thing you understand is salvation. And that would be the only thing you might be able to understand. Because once you, once you get that, you get to a certain point, your ears, you, you don't hear, you don't see. You know, you got to be cleaned up and, and, re and receive and, and, and allowing forgiveness to flow as part of the Christian walk. And it's easy. <laughs> That's the key. When we learn to yield and allow Jesus in, just like when we got saved, we yielded and allowed Jesus to come in our heart. We do the same thing and allow him out. That rivers of living water that come out, the forgiveness, the the intercessory prayer and intercession it's awesome and it's easy and that's what we're, we're teaching here and that's that's why it's so awesome um, that God is so awesome I was I was stewing over what what I should actually talk about today and I told you it would be like vegetable soup and it kind of sort of is already but um, one thing I knew, uh, you know, one thing I, I know now that I didn't know before I had children was the fact that the process of raising children requires skills that I don't have, <laughs> <laughs> that only God possesses. <laughs> and we are, and I'm decidedly not God. Nope. Parenting regularly reminds me, I wrote this down this morning, parenting regularly reminds me of my own humanity. I don't love perfectly like Jesus does. Not all the time. I don't, I, I, I don't have the ability to relate all the time. I don't understand or how to build intimacy all the time. I just feel like I really, I really fall short when, when it comes to that kind of stuff if I don't have the living God in me showing me what to do. We can't do it all on our own. But what, what I thought was interesting is, I, I read a quote from uh, Gary Thomas, which is a, like a relational, uh, relation, relationship author, mostly marriage counseling books and things. But he wrote this quote and I thought it was just amazing. We live in the midst of holy teachers, he says. Sometimes they spit up on themselves or us. Sometimes they throw tantrums and sometimes they cuddle us and kiss us and love us. And the good and the bad, they mold our hearts and they shape our souls. And they invite us to experience God in a newer, deeper way. Although we may, not <clears throat> although we may shed many tears along the sacred journey of parenting, numerous blessings await every bend of the road. I thought that was just so incredible because you, you, you look at parenting books and you think A, B, C, one, two, three. This is what you're supposed to do with your kids. This is how you're supposed to raise them. Blah, blah, blah. And instead I get, this is how they change you. They really do. They, they, keep your, they keep your humility in check. 
they, they, keep, <laughs> they keep you walking in love and, you know, they, they remind you that, that the, the all of, of parenting, especially we're having, we have some issues with, with sleep and nap time and waking up time and different things with Haven and behavior issues. Uh, she's wild. She's a fireball. Um, but if I am looking at a child-centered, if I become child-centered and not God-centered as a parent, it becomes, let's do whatever the child wants, just keep her quiet, do give her whatever, you know. But if I'm God-centered, I, 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 I keep the rules grounded, I make sure that this is, this is this and this is that, and I'm always the same, no matter what, you know. And you also are doing that in, with, with the great, by the grace of God, of course. But you're also keeping in mind that raising your children is, is more like you're honoring the Lord, period. And if you look at, you look at it that, you're, that this, is an, this is an honoring s session between, this is worship. I am, you know, my, my daughter gets up at, at, you know, two or three in the morning and, and wants me to go upstairs and walk her around the room and try to rock her to sleep or whatever. And I'm not thinking I need to do this so that she goes back to sleep. I'm thinking I'm doing this because it's, it's what was given to me. And it's how I, it's, it's how I worship God right now. And it, so then it, it doesn't make me go, oh, she's up again. It, it, makes me, it makes me go, okay, all right, I'll do it. Let's go. And, 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 then, I, and then I praise God through the whole thing. You got to pray through this stuff. It's life. It's not easy, but it, it can be used by God no matter what it is. You give Him praise and worship, and that's what we're here for. It's not our... <clears throat> parenting isn't our purpose. It's our response to the purpose of glorifying and worshiping God. Amen? When I was thinking about... Um, when I was thinking about Father's Day... And I was looking at um, we were we were looking up some different different songs and different things that we could use for worship and, and stuff. And I came across a, a song by Josh Baldwin. I don't know if you anybody knows Josh Baldwin. Um, he he's I think I he's he's just got a really good heart. And I don't know a whole lot about him, um, but I wanted to I wanted to uh, I brought a video um, that Cliff can play. It's it's about five or five minutes or, or long or so, but it really shows. And, and and don't be surprised, you guys over there, that they're they're being prophesied about calling you Abraham because that is the name of the video. But it is it really shows when you when you look at Father Abraham, had many sons and many sons had Father Abraham. He's a he's a, a perfect depiction of, of what God wants for us and how he sees us and how he works with us and how that just like my just like my wife was saying that there's certain things that we have to go through that he doesn't just allow but just because he's you know he's with you still you know she can trip and fall while while I'm holding Haven's hand while I'm walking through the you know wherever she could still trip and fall but I'd still be holding on to her I can pick her back up, I can hold her, I can hug her, I can comfort her. It doesn't mean that I let that happen or made that happen so that she would learn. But some things that God does are for our, our, our maturity in Him. Let's listen to that song because the whole Abraham and Isaac, I can't imagine myself if that was me. can just hold his hand and let us let him walk us through those things that were so hard for Abraham as far as even laying down his his he called he says flesh and bone on there but we know it was Isaac but it is it was his it was his son you know even though he believed that he would probably raise him up would, would as a you know as a father or as as, as somebody that even as a family, another family mother, but as a father, I can't even imagine having to plunge a, plunge a, you know, by God's will, 
plunge a dagger into my own son's chest, even if I knew he was going to be resurrected. I mean, how painful. And then you think, well, the forgotten father on Calvary, we think Good Friday, we think resurrection, we think awesome. But what, you know, what was the father's, what was, what was the father doing? You know, at that time, what, how did he feel that all the sin in, 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 in the world was cast on his son, that he became sin, separated from God the Father? Because he can't know sin, right? He went to hell. But what, I mean, just even getting the scourgings and the pain of the, the, of the cross and, and, and before the death, I couldn't stand to see anybody go through that, let alone somebody from my own flesh and blood. He's a good, good father. He lets us do, get through those things because he knows what's best. He's always with us. Anytime that you're struggling with any hardship, just like we did for this, this week with my wife's miscarriage and everything, it's like he is with us. We know he's with us and he's so faithful. And we have more to be thankful for than I, than I have time to preach. Um, I mean, there's, there's so much even in my, the, my relationship that was restored with my father that there, I mean, there, I could probably write volumes on just that and how it started and how I fell back from it and how it, how it came back together and what I was going through in the process and the, the willingness and openness that, that he had towards me and how much more so the Godfather would when I screw up and when I fall He's always there with me to take my hand and pick me up, get back on my, my feet again. Whether or not I fall, whether or not I am mad at him, it's, it's one of those things that, that, that God can't help himself. He, he loves us so much. He calls us his son. We are predestined. It says in, in Ephesians 1.5, predestined unto his sonship through Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. God is so good. To the praise of the glory of His grace, which He graced us in the Beloved. I love graced us. He graced us. He accepted us in the, in the Beloved. He graced us. Sonship implies that we're having not only the life, but also the position of a son. And God's marked out ones have the life to be his sons and the position to inherit him. This reveals that God has a will in which, his good in which is his good pleasure. God predestined us to be his sons according to his pleasure, according to his heart's delight. How amazing is that? We have a good, good father because it's his pleasure, it's his heart's delight to hear from us, to to watch us mature, to watch us fall, to be with us, to hold us, to care for us in the process. It's his good pleasure to call us sons and daughters. Amen. I know that that was a little bit of chicken soup, or chicken soup, vegetable soup. I wish it was chicken, I'm hungry. But I just wanted to, to, to get you to be able to focus on, on just a Father's Day, but it is Father's Day, but Remember who the ultimate father is and what the ultimate gift was given from him, by him, and how he treats us, that we should treat others and our children as well. Amen. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protection Next week, under applicable what law. Happens at our copyright policy is available at our website, forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit forgive123.com.
Hi, I'm Pastor Jason Clark. We invite you to join our international community of almost a thousand students currently enrolled in a school like no other. Team Embassy equips believers to live in the Spirit by giving them the how-to tools for wholeness, intimacy with God, and living the abundant life Jesus promised us. You will learn how to heal emotional pain quickly and completely. You'll discover amazing keys to tap into the fruit of the Spirit and practice the presence of God as a lifestyle. Exciting courses available include the 60-Day Challenge, Self-Deliverance, Healing Rejection, Codependency, Intimate Prayer, The Functions of the Human Spirit, and many, many more. It's formatted so that you could take it with you on all your mobile devices. Sign up today at training.teamembassy.com. Be transformed. Become all God created you to be. You will never be the same.